All right, hi students. Uh, in this section, we'll talk about uh, the concept of isomers. So what are isomers? From the Greek root word in isomers uh, is the word iso, and remember what iso means? Iso means the same, right? So there's something about these molecules that are the same. Turns out, uh, molecules with the same formula but actually are different molecules uh, are called isomers. And how do we know they're different? Well, because they have different properties. They may have different melting point or different uh, boiling point or different reactivity towards other molecules. And there's two different types of isomers. Uh, the first type is called structural isomers, and you've seen these already. Structural isomers are molecules that have the same molecular formula, the same number of atoms, but, they're, but these atoms are connected differently uh, to each other. And then we'll talk about something new called the stereoisomers. And stereoisomers, basically, they have the same formula again, but uh, and they also have the same connectivity, but the way they're connected in, diff in 3D space makes them different. And we'll take a look at uh, stereoisomers in a bit. But first, let's talk about structural isomers. Um, with our example here is two uh, alkanes. Uh, first off, can you count how many carbon atoms and how many hydrogen atoms are in these uh, two molecules? We need to do that in order to know whether these two have the same uh, molecular formula, right? So in the molecule in the top, we have one, two, three, four, four carbons. And the molecule in the bottom, one, two, three, four carbons. On the top, again, how many hydrogens? 10, right? And on the bottom, also 10. So if they have the same number of carbons and the same number of hydrogens, these two have the same molecular formula. But are they the same compound? Right on the molecule at the top, you can, you can know the name of that. That's four carbons in a row. That's a butane. What about the guy in the bottom? The guy in the bottom is, how would you name that? One, two, three. So that's a propane with a methyl. That's a two-methyl propane, right? See, just the fact that they have different names means they have means they are uh, uh, different molecules, but they have the same formula. So they're related in some way, and that relationship again is called uh, structural isomers. They are molecules with the same molecular formula, but bonded in different orders. The atoms are not bonded differently. Instead of being another carbon here, it got put into uh, connected to the middle carbon instead of the end carbon. Okay, so that's uh, structural isomers. Now let's go talk about stereoisomers. And to start talking about stereoisomers, I have two examples here. Do they have the same formula? The molecule on the left has two carbons, two chlorines, and two hydrogens. The molecule on the right has two carbons, two chlorines, and two hydrogens. So yes, they do have the same formula. Are, they, are the atoms connected in the same way? All right, let's see. The molecule on the left has a carbon that's connected to another carbon with a double bond. It's connected to single bond hydrogen. It's connected to a single bond chlorine. I've, descri I've described the same thing uh, if I were to talk about the molecule on the right, right? This carbon has a double bond with a carbon, bond with a hydrogen, and a bond with a chlorine. What of, let's keep on going and see how they are different. Uh, the molecule on the left again, this left the this carbon here is again double bond to carbon, single bond to hydrogen, single bond to chlorine, whereas the molecule on the right, again, has a double bond with carbon. This carbon has a single bond with chlorine and a single bond with hydrogen. So are they, are the atoms, the order in which they're connected, the same? The answer is yes. They have the same connectivity, right? But somehow they're different. Number one, we know they're different because uh, they have different properties. Uh, one of these have a higher boiling point than another. And also, just by looking at them, they look different, right? So what is different about them is that not in the way, in the order they're connected to each other, but in the 3D shape that they are connected to each other. So again, uh, this carbon is connected to a carbon and a chlorine. This carbon is also connected to carbon and chlorine. But notice how this chlorine is facing down, whereas this chlorine is facing up. That's what I mean by three-dimensional spatial orientation. All right, so how do we name these two? Okay, these are called stereoisomers. They have the same formula. They are bonded in the same way, but they have uh, 3D orientation that's different from one another. So the, the way we name them is on looking at the bulky groups, uh, or the groups that are the same, rather. Since these chlorines are the same, and they're in the same phase, we say that they are facing in the same way. That's called cis. 
Whereas these two chlorines, they're facing the opposite face of each other, right? So if they're opposite of each other, we call that trans, just like the transatlantic uh, rail, railroad, because it's connecting opposite ends of the coast of America. Trans means opposite. So this is called a trans isomer. This is called the cis isomers. So this is a very small difference in these two molecules. But are they? But why is it important to know? Well, it turns out just because uh, of this small difference, uh, nature actually uses uh, this difference um, uh, in very important ways. One example is in the chemistry of vision. In order for us to see where well, there's this protein in our eye called retinal, and it is in its cis conformation, when light hits your eye, that bond breaks and it reforms to become the trans conformation. Again, how do we know this is cis and trans? Look at this bond here. There's a hydrogen coming out here that's invisible that we don't draw. Another hydrogen's coming out here. If you take a look at those hydrogens, are they in the same phase or opposite phase? They're in the same phase, right? So that we call that cis. Another way, just taking a look at this uh, uh, carbon that's coming out this way and carbon coming out this way. Again, are they in the same phase or opposite phase? They're in the same phase, so we call that cis. Whereas these two, notice this carbon coming out here and this carbon coming out here, they're in the opposite phase. And hydrogens are also on the opposite phase. So we call that the trans conformation. Again, this is pretty cool, right? Just from the cis to trans is what gives us vision. Another example is in, uh, in food, uh, actually, in, in diet. Uh, when we talk about trans fat and, and cis fat, actually, we don't talk about cis fat because cis fat is the kind of fat that occurs naturally. Trans fat was something that's found in the uh, laboratory, the chemistry laboratory, and it was used back in the day because it was more stable so then your food could last longer. But now with uh, more research, we know that trans fat can give you a lot of um, health problems. But we're not talking about uh, uh, the, the health effects here. We're just going to take, take a look at this example to see the difference between cis and trans. All right, so I said cis was what's natural and trans was unnatural, right? So let's take a look at what is in the cis. Take a look at that molecule and, and convince yourself that, that that is indeed called the cis uh, sterile isomers. Why is that cis? See those hydrogens versus the ones that's called trans, right? The cis is in the same phase, whereas the trans is the hydrogens are on opposite phase. That's called cis and that's called trans, okay? Now, if we were to like take a look at this molecule here, uh, this is the cis, uh, uh, this is the cis fat, and this is the trans fat. Notice how just because the cis fat, it's kind of in the same phase, uh, that makes it a big kink in this long molecule. Whereas in the trans fat, that kink is disrupted, and it's a very, a very long uh, linear molecule. It turns out that is one of the keys why this uh, 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 trans fat. It, it tends to be more stable because it can stack upon one another much more easily than this one which has a kink in it, right? Because it can stack along upon one another much easily, this kind of fat it, uh, can, uh, can last longer and, uh, uh, and it's actually a, um, a solid at room temperature.